I honestly don't even know where to start with a review of Wizard of Legend, and it's your boy. You've just been upgraded to the man, because this game is incredible. Thank you so much for throwing it my way and making me just aware that it existed. I've needed a game like Wizard of Legend in my life since... Yeah, I'm just gonna say it, Chrono Trigger. It is a game that is parallel for a whole bunch of different reasons that when you play it, if you play it, you will see the way that it's developed and the way that it actually immerses you as a player just into this environment and, and nurtures this investment. If you want to really, really get involved and like you just won't want to put it down. Where other games have really immersive graphic intros and just this kind of monologue-ish trailer to get you invested in this character, Wizard of Legend just kicks that to the curb. It starts with you just, well, there you go, you just pop on screen and you walk through what you find out to be is the Museum of Wizard Trials. And walking up to the museum and talking to patrons of the museum, you start to figure out things about the Wizard Trials and it starts to nurture this interest for you as a player. And every time you talk to an information desk, you're given kind of like a demo play version of a magic spell card, which goes into your inventory, and everywhere that there are these spells available, there are like little hands-on science exhibit kind of areas, allowing you to play with the spell. As you work your way through the museum, there's little displays of coins and clothing and other spells, and then even kind of this big tribute to the current leaders of the Council of Magic. And it's those same leaders that we find later in the game are actually kind of like the trial bosses of each individual area. Toward the end of wandering through the museum, you get to the main exhibit, pretty much, and that is the demo version letting you walk through what the wizard's trial would be. And it's supposed to be this little micro area that teaches you how to jump over pits with the new dash move you've acquired, and use some of your other moves in actual combat. And the cool thing is, it's set up in this museum to be like a hands-on touristy attraction, and that's kind of the feel you get. Like in Chrono Trigger, where they had you initially going through the carnival with all the games that teach you how to fight, and teach you how currency works, and teach you basically what the actual investment and overall goal of the game is. But in Wizard of Legend, when you finish the little mock trial, and go through and reheal your health with the little cookies or whatnot, you go up to the final exhibit, and that is the token of the wizard trials. And while this is a display piece, your character has a very unique reaction and is actually whisked off to the actual wizard trials. And it's at this point, after you've actually learned about the game mechanics, about the different cloaks, about the different items, about spells, about how to fight, about what the point of the game is, which is the wizard's trials and who you'll eventually be fighting, you are then, at that point, put into the environment where you can actually start playing the game. That is, after you've introduced yourself to your housemates, which take care of you, take care of your spells, take care of your clothing, and take care of your inventory. And all of those elements also work in a very, very unique way throughout the game. After teleporting out of your house, you're brought back almost to what I'd like to say again is a Chrono Trigger-esque kind of carnival scene, where you can interact with characters and buy new spells, cloaks, and trinkets that always refresh every time you complete a level or die. However, one of the unique characteristics is that you can only carry a certain number of spells, and you can only carry one of these items. And each of these mechanics working together, if it's done right, can be massively advantageous. I mean, you can pretty much play through however you want, but if you're a developing character, or if you've built your spells in a certain way, having a certain item could literally change the game for you. And certain cloaks also have their effects. Warping into the actual trials is where all bets are off. This is a rock'em sock'em hack and slash rogue style RPG where you're trying to kill everything and everything's trying to kill you. You have very limited health and though you can buy one health potion in each level, it's not a full heal and it costs money. And this money you can only get in the level and after you die or finish that level, well that money's gone. So if you don't use it, you lose it. This again causes you to really invest in thinking do I want to fight the boss immediately so I can chance having the most health, or do I want to fight all these characters to potentially get a new item so that I can fight the boss more effectively? At each iteration of each room, your health and statistics stay the same, but you do carry any new items you managed to get in the previous level with you, and you have the ability to get more in that following room and more in the next. So the further you manage to get, not only do your bonuses for killing creatures and enemies stack up, but the more items you can carry with you, making you just an overall powerhouse god of a character, if you can get that far. Dying in a level just starts you over on that teleporting pad at your lodgings. It's no big deal, you keep any magic that you had originally, you keep the items you went into the trials with, but all money that you gained and any items that you actually purchased in the trial are gone. The only caveat to that is if you can gain chaos gems in the level because you 
you will take those with you when you come back. And using those, you can purchase items or magic cards or cloaks from the actual carnival area, and those are pretty much permanent. So as you build your character outside of the game, you can go back stronger and stronger. Though every time you enter the dungeon maze, it's gonna be a fresh start more or less. So you really gotta plan out what you wanna do and, and how you're building your character. The music of the game is really well developed and it lends itself very well to each of the aspects of the game, whether you're in your lodgings or you're in the carnival or you're in any of the several dungeons. They're each diverse and they change as you play. And that keeps any potential monotony from getting too rigid. The controls, I have to say, are great. It maps each spell to a different button and you can actually expand and unlock new buttons that are available to add more and more spells as you go. This is through the purchase of certain items, and I'm not going to spoil which one. And this allows for an incredibly complex gameplay where you can lunge and cast spells of all different types, whether they're AoE or point or precision or line, and just obliterate everything around you if you know the character you've built and if you understand how to use the spells that you've assigned. The cool thing is each one can actually be reassigned or remapped to different buttons if something seems more intuitive for you. Just because it puts A as your close strike button, if you choose B because you're used to playing PlayStation maybe, you can just remap it to B. It's not a problem. The dungeons and the enemies within them are procedurally generated, so each time you go back through, even if you do like I did, die 30 or 40 times on the first room of level 1, you're not going to have the same experience each time you go through it. And not only that, the level that you start on actually changes randomly, so you're not always going to start on the fire level room one. You could start on the forest level or the ice level, and it changes it up and just it gives you a way to fight any sort of frustration or anxiety over playing the same map over and over due to the learning curve. Overall, this is just an incredible game. I fell in love with it almost immediately, and even though it is so painfully Dark Souls difficult, it's it's great like i just want to see how far i can get because all of the game mechanics are there from the beginning meaning that the only way to get better is for you the actual player to get better to get better at playing the game games like this they got put on the back burner for so long that i'm glad somebody finally brought one back and they did it really really well I would highly suggest this game to anyone who's a fan of Rogue Style Adventure or Hack and Slashes or just is a fan of these gorgeous pixel art indie games that are coming out so recently. It is definitely at the top of my list and something that I'm always going to have on my Switch. Well that wraps up the review of Wizard of Legend. I hope you enjoyed the review or at least found it interesting and if so feel free to throw me a like and show your support. And don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates. I put this content out as often as I can, and that is generally every other day. So check back often for new content, or hit that little bell icon to get notified when a new video hits the web. Anyway, this has been Budget Gamer. Thanks for watching.